Hey guys, it's Christine. I thought I wanted to go ahead and sit down and do sort of like a little heart to heart with you guys, some life updates, let you guys know where my head is at currently. If you guys are new here, I'm Christine. We sort of left off with letting you guys know that I had quit my nine to five corporate job and how I was sort of going through like an identity crisis I can't say that has completely changed in terms of the identity crisis, but yeah, it just feels like it just feels like it's, it's time to sit down and have a chat with you guys. So we are going to be talking about a few different things uh, revolving around grief and this feeling of dread, and also I took some notes so that I just wouldn't forget, but also just like this renewed sense of hope, which is. Fortunately, where I am now, thankfully, but you know, May has been quite the emotional journey so far. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. Should just come right out with it. So about a week and a half ago, we lost Sammy, our family Shih Tzu. And it was, it was a really, really tough thing for me and my family to go through. Uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, I actually did a live, like an Instagram live uh, of Sammy's last night with us. So that's over on my IGTV if you'd like to watch that. It was a very, very raw and vulnerable time. But I also wanted to, you know, honor his life and celebrate some of his last moments with us. And I know a lot of you guys who have been watching me for some time you you remember how much I adore Sammy. I, I still adore him so much to this day. But yeah, he was in quite a few of my videos many years ago. I didn't think I was gonna tear up. <laughs> I actually thought about creating a whole video, like a whole montage around him, and um, I just couldn't quite get myself to do it. I guess it's just still. It actually doesn't feel like it happened a week and a half ago. It feels like it happened a while ago. And I was trying to figure out, it's like, is it just when you grieve, does it feel like time moves really slowly because you're going through so many different emotions? Or maybe it's because, you know, we learned about his liver cancer back in early, early 2019. And I started grieving him from that very moment when I got the call from my mom that he has liver cancer and that, you know, the doctor highly did not recommend him going through chemo because he is a senior dog, he's older, and that would have been incredibly rough on his body. Uh, he had this huge tumor growing in his abdomen that couldn't safely remove and even if we did, it, it was just far spread to where the cancer would continue spreading. So, at that time, back in 2019, I, you know, I didn't think, I didn't think he would be with us for much longer. Um, so I'm incredibly grateful that we were able to spend almost two more years with him. Yeah, it's just been a a tough, not just past week and a half. It's it's been tough beyond that. If you're following me on my vlog channel, you will also have seen that I've talked about him quite a few times there as well. Um, and the scare that we went through last December with thinking like that was that was it. It was his time then. But he squeezed out a handful of more months for us and it's just, he's just such a good boy. <laughs> So I just wanted to to kind of briefly talk about this. You know, one one thing is to like to inform you guys, but also oh, you got some things falling down. I don't know if you saw that. Um, just to kind of share some of the things that I've learned or now I can put words to, and this sense of like I have been grieving him for about two years, um, and then following his passing, it's. I guess before he passed, they call it anticipatory grief. I had never heard this term before. Of course, it's very like me to 
go and try to research like what I'm feeling so I can put some words to it and gain a better understanding of what I'm going through because it's my first time ever losing someone that I felt that emotionally close to. He really was like a, a buddy to me because I mean we, we grew up together. He, he was there throughout um, the majority of my YouTube journey. <laughs> so definitely still holds such a, a special place in my heart and I know he does for some of you guys too. Yeah, all right, let's uh, let's, uh, let's just wipe these tears off a little bit and we can move on to the next. <laughs> so I guess speaking about grief kind of made me realize that there's a lot of different things that you can grieve. The loss of a loved one, a very obvious one, right? But also tying back to identity, anything that you feel like you've formed a sense of identity around, uh, you can definitely grieve losing whatever might have been attached to it. So when I left my corporate job um, a few months ago, it's about four months ago now. Yeah, so this is like a four month post update. That was, I feel like I'm kind of going through some of those similar emotions, which is really interesting, but it also makes sense because obviously I didn't quit on a whim. I planned, I planned on it. And there was that sense of anticipatory grief. There was that sense of, okay, I need to find the courage to do this and trust that whatever happens afterwards is going to be, I'm, I'm going to be okay. So a lot of similar feelings. Um, and then of course, after quitting, there was a lot of uncertainty. I, I didn't quit and just have another job lined up. I didn't quit and 100% decide, I'm gonna go back to being an influencer, though I was very committed to just giving it my all. I think some of you will notice, I've just been very experimental in my approach and it's been a lot of fun. It kind of feels like like the early, early days of YouTube where I just posted whatever the heck I felt like, whatever I felt like creating. Just just a few, few things like what has happened in these past few months. Um, I was advised to, and advised by those I trust, you know, to still take calls if recruiters reach out to me, still have those conversations. And I've had a few. I had one very recently that I honestly, really dreaded. I mean, this was following Sammy's passing. This was just like a week after that where I suddenly felt like, oh my gosh, you know, this is all moving so quickly. I just talked to a recruiter. Next thing I know, the hiring managers, like just a couple days later, wanted to talk to me. I know, right? Like blessed, fortunate, lucky. You would think I should be filled with like gratitude and be so excited that these type of opportunities are even presented to me, but I was filled with dread. And it wasn't like, you know, I was just nervous about doing an interview. It definitely wasn't that at all. But it just felt like I suddenly had to quickly decide, do I want to go back into corporate? Is everything else I'm doing, is it going to work out? Am I just in over my head? Would it be wiser to, you know, learn new skills, challenge myself in a different way, but also be making money for the time being if I don't quite have it all figured out. It's not all doom and gloom or sad. It was really good for me to go through that interview, even though I dreaded it. I'm not even kidding, guys. So what, when I speak on this, I don't want to offend. I understand that I am speaking from a place of privilege. I know I touched on this in my previous Q&A, but I just want to bring that up again that, you know, I know many would be ecstatic, really happy to have these opportunities. I often just read about how there are so many people struggling to get a job. They'll apply, like send out hundreds of applications and uh, just no luck, you know, and that, that has to be so defeating. I just don't want any of this to come off the wrong way. They are just my personal experiences. But 
I wasn't really sure if it's if it's time or if I genuinely want to go back to the nine to five corporate lifestyle. It really did take a toll on me. And I didn't want to forget about, you know, the burnout I experienced. But beyond burnout, because a lot of different things can cause you burnout, not just your job, it actually really is on you as well. You can experience burnout in so many different ways. It's not just about like being overloaded with work, but also just understanding the type of lifestyle you want to live. If, if it's anything I learned from taking this break and after losing Sammy is that life really is so short. Just a week ago before that interview, I had a dream that like I was considered being casted for the show The Walking Dead so random I couldn't make sense of it I was just like why would I have that dream I remember just like walking around I think it was like at nighttime and a girl I'm, I'm guessing one of the cast members she just kind of like swung around in her car and was like hey come with me she took me to this place where I believe it was a ton of different cast members of all different ages and they were just spending some time with each other they were sort of like partying but I also remember in that dream thinking to myself like do I belong here and about a week later now thinking about that dream I wonder if it's almost like symbolic to the living dead those who are just living life miserably and basically sacrificing a ton and doing a lot of work that doesn't fulfill them kind of slaving away and I was like that what's happening is you're dedicating like 40 50 years of your life just slaving away until retirement until you're in your later later years to finally live it and enjoy it I just don't align with that at all I want to enjoy my life now I want to have fun all the time <laughs> That I don't think is ever going to change about me. So I don't know if I was like starting to get into like this delusional headspace of like, oh, but maybe there is a corporate job that'll be different. I would love, I would love for someone, any employers out there to prove me wrong, prove us wrong. This is why I got into employer branding and felt so passionate about it because I wanted to tell the stories of employees, but also understand what it is that would make work fulfilling for the majority. It's a very structured environment, even those that may say that they're not super structured, that they're very laid back, there is still quite a bit of structure that you didn't lay out for yourself. But what that interview taught me was that I need to hold, I need to have a ton of conviction around what I want and what I don't want. I showed up at that interview as a very 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 honest Christine some might say that that is dumb because it's like well if you want the job you gotta like act like you want it so bad I have never I'm being honest with you guys I don't know if this is something I would have advised of everyone but you want to come into an interview so confident and as if you're really like you're not dying for that job because that company should be wanting you it's not just a, a one-way street. It needs to be a mutual relationship where both sides do get something out of it. I want to be able to 100% be myself no matter where I end up. I think what was filling me with dread was that I was starting to feel like this was like the only option. Like I was kind of like, my mind was very clouded. I forgot that, no, you have other options. There will be other opportunities or you can pave your own path. Like don't feel like it's just like one or the other. So I feel so much better. And I think spending time with family, loved ones, good friends, just spending that quality time with them also really helps you reflect on like, you can see like a reflection of yourself through them too because like they know you so well. So I've just been spending a lot of quiet time in the past couple weeks just reflecting and being kind to myself. Uh, I didn't start working out again, like lifting weights until yesterday, which by the way, holy cow, it makes such a huge difference. I think I was, I felt like I was ready to step back into like <laughs> existence or into the world after lifting some weights and after just talking to some people and trying to work towards something that I feel excited about and 
very driven by, passionate about. I think it's important to, to feel passionate. I've had people in the past tell me that I'm pretty intense and it's like, I'd like to just think I'm passionate. <laughs> Sorry, it's uh, gotten a lot sunnier. We were sitting in the shade, but now the sun is hitting us and you know what, it's okay. I really do feel a renewed sense of hope. I like woke up on the right side of the bed today and I am just ready to take whatever comes at me, take it on. You guys really have given me the courage to express more than just joy. And that means a lot to me because that's what it means to be human. Like, no one should be expected to be 100% like happy or okay all of the time. When we're able to share these type of moments with one another, that's what strengthens our connection. And I'm just really grateful for that. Another thing, and this is a bit last minute notice, but if you guys enjoy any of my cooking videos, uh, that I've done with my mom or just you know that I, any that I've done in the past I am gonna be doing a live virtual event with my sorority so I am a part of an Asian interest sorority Delta Phi Lambda we are going to be cooking Vietnamese pork chops I'll include the event bright link below but all of the proceeds will be going to good cause and this is all in celebration of AAPI Heritage Month, so I am really, really excited. This is a Vietnamese dish that I really love. I'll have all that information down below in the info section. I really hope you guys join us because it's gonna be a good time. And that is it. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.